Steve, what do you think happened offensively with you guys in, in the second and third quarters? It just didn't seem like there was a lot of spacing. Did you, did you think things were going well or was the shots just not going? What, what did you think went on there? We had a lot of turnovers in the second quarter um, when, when we lost that lead. I think we were up 11. We started turning it over and then taking quick shots, and that fed into their uh, transition and their ability to, um, to get to the foul line. So I thought that's when the game changed. They mentioned after game six of the last series that they didn't like the energy of it. Did you like to see the energy in this game? Uh, no, I mean, that, that, that point from in the mid second quarter, you know, we, we had control of the game. We were in, in pretty good shape. And uh, that's when we lost, uh, you know, lost our poise. I, I think we might have had four technicals in the first half. Um, and uh, 12 turnovers at halftime. So, you know, you're, you're on the road. Uh, you're going against a great team, a great defensive team uh, in particular. And um, you know, the, you know, the crowd is going to be into it. Um, got to be got to be more poised than we were. What makes it difficult sometimes to, to regain that poise? Because there have been times throughout the seasons, really, you guys will go down, but muster up enough to get back into it. So why was it harder to, to regain the poise tonight? Uh, well, you know, the, the tough environment. I mean, you're, you're on the road in a playoff game. Um, it, it's, it's easier in the regular season to, uh, you know, respond to a, a tough stretch. Everything is magnified in the playoffs. And um, so... Um, you know, a bad stretch can turn into a, uh, a longer stretch, um, you know, against a team like the Lakers who, uh, that uh, has been playing well and uh, is very good defensively and obviously has, uh, you know, some great players. So we, um, we, we kind of, I thought, uh, let our foot off the gas and uh, Lakers took advantage of it and they were, they were great. You know, they dominated the game. They put Reeves on Steph. Uh, did that kind of scramble things at all, or was it just a, a tough shooting and, and turnover night for Steph generally? Uh, just a tough night for everybody, really. I mean, you know, we had 25 assists and 19 turnovers. Uh, that's Those aren't good numbers for us. Uh, those 19 turnovers turned into 27 points. Um, they shot 20 more free throws than than we did. So you th you put all those numbers together, and this was a uh, this was a Laker game, you know, uh, dominating from the foul line and uh, getting out in transition based on uh, based on you know us uh, not having uh, good offensive possessions. So yeah. they they controlled it. Clay specifically, I think, had six turnovers. Did you think he was rushing things? Did you think? Yeah, uh, I thought all of our guys were in a little bit of a rush. Um, you know, they're they're trying. Trying hard to to make plays, and um, you know we just got got out of sorts, out of rhythm. Steve, what was the locker room like after the game? Is this one of those where everyone just kind of gives each other space, or was there a message from someone involved? And in, what was it? No, nope, just uh, you know everybody's obviously down, and um, you know we just lost by thirty in a playoff game, so nobody's happy. Steve, are you worried that some of those same pitfalls from game one popped up in game three again after you just saw them, after you just made the adjustments? Do you want to see if you can equalize the, the seesaw between games? Uh, I'm very confident in our team and our ability to, to bounce back. Steve, what was the perspective you had on the two challenge calls on Draymond? The one, you know, the first one that the Lakers had and then the one that you guys had? I, I didn't see any replays um, of either. So, you know, I, I rely on uh, on the guys behind our bench and um, to uh, determine whether we should challenge. And, you know, there's a lot that goes into that. But uh, given that, um, that when we challenged, I think it was Draymond's fourth foul, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so you, block charges are tough to get overturned um, generally. Um, so, um, you know, ours didn't get overturned, unfortunately, but, um, but theirs did. Thanks. You had a, you guys had a pretty good lead in this, early in the second quarter, and everything just seemed to stop. What, what do you think happened the there? The game stopped. We were on the free throw line every time. Did you, uh, were you satisfied, happy with the way the refs called that? It is what it is. Game over now. Don't matter if I'm satisfied or don't matter.
But what does that do to a team mentally to, to keep having the game stop and keep having the fouls pile up? Um, it's frustrating. Can you take anything away from this game into the next game? What do you, is there anything, any lesson learned from this game, and what yeah. is it? So Play better. Draymond, I think they called you for two blocking fouls, which seems very frustrating. How do you play defense? How do you play good, solid defense in the postseason? When Just keep playing defense I'm playing. Maybe they'll call it. Maybe they won't. We'll see. Steve was saying how he felt, especially middle second quarter on, you guys started to just lose your composure. Why is it hard to sometimes regain that composure? Um, I don't know. The game's still going on. So everything that's happening is still happening. You just try to figure it out as you go. Did this feel similar to game one? I mean, the free throw count would be one similarity. Or do you think this was a different kind of stylistic game than that? Uh I think it's pretty similar. Uh, Draymond, what sort of explanations have you got through the playoffs of like what's the interpretation of what's a block and a charge? You don't really get explanations these days. Well, I guess how do you adapt to I different interpretations? I won't adapt. I'm going to keep playing the same defense I've played for 11 years. Sorry, this is a tricky one to ask, but when you're talking with the referees, do you feel like they're at least listening? Do you feel like guys from both si both teams can, can make a case about what's frustrating them? I don't know. Um, sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Depends. What did you think was happening offensively? Um, they switched up the matchups a little bit. They put Reeves on staff. Yeah, we was getting to what we wanted to get to. Then the game stopped. Is there a way you can get, considering how they're calling it, that you guys can get more free throws yourselves? I don't know. I um, think we're going to the rim. So, I don't know. Maybe we can, maybe we can. We'll see. Did you think led to kind of the spiraling there in the second quarter and then get going in the third? I think the turnovers and our fouling, and uh, that's on me. You know, playoff career high, six turnovers, it's inexcusable. So Monday I'll be better and more sure with the ball, make better decisions. And uh, can't send them alive too, as much as we did. 37 times, way too many. So uh, Monday those would be points of emphasis for us is, you know, being sure with the ball and limiting our turnovers or not fouling. Were, were, were you getting kind of drawn in at different kind of angles with some, some of those turnovers? What, what do you think caused No, I just it? think I just made errant passes, and, yeah, that's, it was that simple. I just wasn't uh, making the sharp, crisp pass like I'm used to, and I'll watch the film, and I'll respond, and uh, I'll play much better Monday. Steph mentioned the uh, fast break where he threw it to you and you weren't looking. Um what was happening there? Were you thinking the ball's not, obviously you're not thinking yeah. the ball's coming there. No, that was my fault. I should have sprinted to the rim. You know, I was trying to run to the corner, but I should have sprinted to the rim, got that layup. And uh, like I said, I'll watch the film tomorrow, and um, I know I'll just be much better Monday. Uh, Clay, I know you were talking about how you, you were looking forward to playing here in front of friends and family. What was that like, just, you know, first time playoff game here at Staples, or Crypto? Uh, despite the outcome, it was great. Despite my performance, it's still an awesome thing for me to do. I mean, I get to go see my mom and dad right now, my nephew and my brother, and uh, still something I don't take for granted. So uh, I'll enjoy it even more Monday because uh, I'm looking forward to a bounce-back performance, not only for myself but the whole team. So... Uh, this one stings, but we don't have a lot of time to dwell on it because we know we have a great opportunity ahead of us on Monday. Clay, just kind of from a, a big picture perspective, how do you reconcile how you guys played two days ago with just how you guys played tonight? Oh, man, it's uh, the end of the day. doesn't matter if you win by 30, lose by 30. It's still 2-1. And we got to remind ourselves we got a chance to even out the series and go home. So... 
as uh, ugly as this was tonight, we have an opportunity to respond on Monday. So there's no point in just dwelling on it and hanging our head and getting discouraged because we've been through uh, more adversity than a 2-1 deficit. And uh, we know how to respond. We've done it in our existence uh, for 10 years here. Clay, Steve had mentioned that you guys had lost your composure midway through the second. And that kind of was the reason for the unraveling. That's happened a few times during the regular season, too. Just how do you guys address that mid-game? Um, shoot. Uh, just being mentally tougher and coming together as a team rather than splintering. And uh, Monday is a great, great opportunity for us to show what we're about and hopefully our toughness. I think we are a very tough team, and we got uh, pumped tonight, unfortunately, on the boards, on the glass, or at the free throw line. So it's on us to watch the film, dissect it, and be better. Uh, Clay Mando, what's key in adapting to how the game is called, even if that might change game to game? More emphasis to play with our hands back, stand on our feet, and contest without fouling. And uh, yeah, do those three things and put ourselves in a good position. Asked Draymond about what happened in the second quarter. He just said the game stopped, we started calling the fouls. Did you feel that way where kind of whatever momentum, whatever rhythm you had stopped when, when there were so many fouls called against you guys? I mean, yeah, it's never, <clears throat> um, especially on the road and the way that they try to defend us when the game stops, it's not in our favor. So you just got to understand momentum. Um, in a game, uh, like two different styles of play, it, it all matters. So there's a turnover where <clears throat> uh, me and Clay had a little miscommunication and transition. And then the barrage of whistles and all that stuff changed momentum quickly. That was really the point where they felt like they, they got life and they finished off the quarter strong and it carried over into the second half. So we gotta we gotta respond. Steph, uh, parts of this game were very similar to game one, um, and you guys adjusted obviously beautifully. Is is each game just its own separate entity and we can't draw any conclusions from one game to the next about momentum or, or tendencies? Yeah, I mean, that's kind of the nature of a playoff series, especially because of how drastically different we play. Um, so, yeah, we'll, we'll respond. We've got a lot of confidence in our ability to do that. And uh, that's why you play the game. How different was it for you when you have Reeves picking you up to start? Um, obviously, Vanderbilt's kind of freelancing maybe a little bit. Uh, did that take an adjustment? Was that a little bit of a wrinkle that, that took a while to figure out? Yes and no. Like, it was obviously different from game two, more similar to how they tried in game one. But uh, I knew that they were not going to trap and um, let us play four or three on the back side. <clears throat> and we got to a little bit of it, but, um, you know, they're long and athletic behind the play, and that's their strong suit to try to protect the paint. And for us, <clears throat> you know, we obviously got to we gotta shoot the ball better as a team, as, as a whole, you know, create better looks by you know, moving the ball. But it's more just a connecting the game issue for us. It's always been like we had – Things rolling in the first half, and as soon as you know, the game turned in the second, middle of the second quarter, you know, played right into their hands. So I'm not really worried about the the adjustments more so than just connecting the entire game. Hey Steph, what, whether it's uh, calls that stop the momentum of a game or you guys not getting calls you'd like, what can you guys draw from the team's obvious experience to navigate through those things? Uh, just remain confident in who we are and how we play and not get distracted by stuff that you can't control as much as um, it's frustrating. You know, that's the that's the test that every team has to go through throughout a series is 
you know, blocking out all that type of stuff as, as much as you can. Um, we obviously know <clears throat> who we are and what we're capable of and all the things we always say after a loss. And I'm excited to get back out there on Monday. You mentioned that pass to Clay. You really you turned around and you did not look happy either with yourself or whatever, just the miscommunication. You just thought he was going to cut in there. And which, what was going through your mind when you stopped and you literally, you know, you looked at it? It's obviously my fault because I threw the pass, but it's one of those plays where you're making a read for somebody else. It's like uh, Cardinal Sims, a point guard, um, you know, making a read when you're not on the same page. Uh, I know he would say if he turned around and looked, he might have had a layup, but I threw the pass, so it's one of those bang-bang kind of plays. I was frustrated the fact that I threw it because I saw the whole thing you know, from start to finish, but uh, yeah, it's just a momentum play. Uh, you, I know you guys have talked about not waiting to get behind or down to kind of find that next level, uh, but how familiar is it in this place that you're in where you essentially facing a must win? I mean, how many series have we been in since it started? You find yourself in a lot of different scenarios, so you can draw back on pretty much anything, and that is one of the scenarios we've been in and we've responded, so uh, that's why... You sit up here with a lot of confidence that we can do what we need to do to, to win game four. So um, at the end of the day, you just got to go do it. Like that's, that's the beauty of a series and having an opportunity to, you know, throw this one in the garbage and move on. Uh, and that, that's the challenge too. Like we have to be able to, again, just focus on the things that we need to, to, combat you know what what they're doing and um get the game at our pace and our speed we, we've shown we can do it we gotta we gotta do it again what, what as the as the leader when things are spiraling like that uh i know we've seen it in memphis last year what's it like for you um uh, I guess trying to figure out how to stop it from just, you know, continuously spiraling out of control feels like that's something you, uh, as a team, struggle with. We struggled more this year, for sure, just because, uh, I mean, for whatever reason, we've had uh, a lot of games kind of just slip through, whether it's a three bad three-minute, six-minute stretch, whatever it is, and the whole tone of the game changes. Um, you know, it, it's not a good feeling when you're trying to just settle in to to what's happening in real time and making sure everybody's on the same page. But, you know, last series proved that we could, uh, could figure it out, you know, and, and, and overcome some of that, those challenges that we've had. And unfortunately we got to do it again based on how tonight went. So, um, yeah, it's not ideal in terms of how you want to perform in this series.